Alrighty guys, Zeno's here for part 2 of the sprite animation tutorial. Uh, now, hopefully you guys have gotten um, the GIF making a little bit down. Maybe you've made a couple of your own GIFs, kind of queued them up so you can get ready to use them in this tutorial. And I'll show you in this tutorial how to make your character move across like the screen and stuff like that. I'm going to start right now. Open Action GIF 2.0. And what I'm going to import here is just... Uh, a gif of Sonic running. We'll do Sonic Run 2, a very, very cliche one indeed. Sonic running 1, usually because I have different forms of him running. And I'm going to drag him in here. And honestly, I'm going to click on modify, transform, and flip horizontal because I want him to go from left to right. And I will make him bigger just for the sake of this video. So. What we're going to want to do here is make sure he's animated, test the, the swoof, that's what I, I'm going to call these files, SWF, swoof files, he's, he's animating a bit slowly in my opinion, I'm going to change my frame rate to 30 just so it looks smoother. And if you think he doesn't look like he's running fast enough, you can double click on him, which will open up his symbol, which is this thing here, the thing that made the thing, the, the, the symbol animate. And you can shorten these um, frames or extend them like I did accidentally. So remove frames. I usually like cutting them in half so it looks like he runs even faster. This is kind of a byproduct of making the GIF at the frame rate it said here, which is technically 24 frames per second. But when we test it again, he should be moving very, very fast like you would in a high action scene. Um, but now we'll get into the motion tweeting. We've only had him in one layer right now, which is okay, because we're just going to show him going from left to right. What we're going to do here is pull him out of the canvas, so when he's on the camera, he doesn't appear at all. But now we're going to go into the frame tab here in the timeline, and we're going to click on some random frame. I'll just do 30, because that's one second of animation. You're going to want to right-click on it. Right-click, insert keyframe. Now there are two, there are actually two methods to do motion tweeting and I'm doing the old version because newer versions of Flash do have a new method of motion tweeting. They say it's easier, but I really don't think so. I think it would be if you're wanting to do like turning and motions, but for basic moving uh, motion tweens, they're, they're not really necessary. So I'm going to do the old method and then I'll show you the new method. But to do the old method, make sure you, you did make the keyframe. Stay on that last frame and click on Sonic. Now you're going to want to move him somewhere else. I'm going to just drag him across the place. And one thing I like to do to keep him perfectly horizontal is hold shift and then click on him. He'll, he'll like to stay in line at the height he will always be when you drag him to the right. So he'll, he'll never move accidentally up or down so he won't be crooked. Just a little tip. And... Um, Right now, if you see we hit control and test the movie, nothing happened. He hasn't moved, nothing will happen. Um, what you're going to want to do here now is click on the big space of frame here, right click on it, and click on create classic tween. What this will do now is turn this into this weird purplish blue color. I have no idea because I don't know if I'm colorblind or not. Um, but if you click and drag on it, it looks like he's moving, which is good. So when you test the video, looks like he's running across the screen, which is very, very nice. You've now made it look like Sonic has been running. And it looks very nice. <laughs> so that'll be a very, very, very nice thing you want. Now we'll we'll do the new method of motion tweening. I'll show you how to do that real quick. What I'm going to do now is con hit Control Z. This will undo the things I'm doing, as you can see on the screen. I'm going to go all the way back to where there's just one frame of animation. And we're going to go back and click on 30, but we're just going to click insert frame. There won't be an extra added frame at all. Now this is this is this is why it was so weird for me to learn this new method. What we're going to want to do now is before we even move Sonic, we're going to right click on it, click create motion tween, and it turns it into the blue color. But there's nothing, there's no end reference frame for it to move to. Except that the last frame actually is the reference frame. It's a little confusing, I know. But now we're going to click on Sonic and we're going to drag him over to the right. And you're going to see these weird little dots. 
Now, I'm not too new on the new form of motion tweening, but I'm pretty sure those are just reference frames to show that he is moving to each, oopsie, he's moving to each and every dot. So see, he still moves across the screen, and if we test the swoof, he still moves like if it was the classic tween. Now, I believe if you go into the middle of frames, like I'll go hit frame number 15 here, and move him up, I think it'll auto do animation for you like that. It'll show that he's moving up and down, which honestly looks a little bizarre, but when you test the movie, he does move up and down. This can be a weird, this is still weird, a weird way to do motion tweening in my opinion, which is why I don't do it, but that is a nice method. Now, what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you how to do a V-cam setup, and I'll probably link this one in this description, but before we do V-cams, we're going to want to make a background for Sonic to run on. So I'm going to keep hitting Control z until we have him back here. Uh, with the one frame and we're gonna go into Adobe Fireworks again. This is this program is very handy because it lets you copy the background It lets you build and create a background right straight from it You can copy it and it won't be weird and copy like upside down or with a white background For some reason Adobe Fireworks likes to work with Adobe Flash in this regard and which is why I like the program so much but uh, I'm gonna, these are leftover files from my previous episode. Don't judge me. <laughs> what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna open and find a file for him for a background to run in. I'll probably do Sonic Advance 2, go in the backgrounds folder and click on the Leaf Forest Zone. I'm just saying these files so you guys can follow me on this and replicate what I'm making to make sure you're doing it right. Now, as you can see, there is no actual transparency in the background. This is kind of stupid. So what I like to do here is click on this little thing called the magic wand tool. This comes very much in handy. Make sure the tolerance is very, very low. Set it on zero or some low number like one, two, three, or four. I have it on six right now. Click on the gray. It'll select everything in gray, but not every everything. As you can see right here, this isn't selected. What I like to do is eliminate all gray from the canvas. Now in order to do that, you can right click after you've left clicked on the gray. And you can click this button called Select Similar. Now it'll select everything that's a gray, and now you can hit Delete, and everything will become transparent. Which will be nice, because you're going to want to import things like the background and the foreground. So now I will take this background here, and what I like to do here is re-click on the Magic Wand tool and hold Alt. Alt will see that there's a little minus button. It's really hard to see on this 1080p screen, but it'll subtract any similar color, quote, quote, from what you've selected. And I like to do this because I'll hit the transparent area here, and it now narrows down to the square here, so I can now cut it and have it perfectly eliminated from like no extra edges at all because when you import something into flash let's say the background here i'll insert a new layer i'll drag it down because that'll be called the background which i'll name and you paste it in here it'll become perfect if we if we were to do this outer method here as i'm going to cut right now and show i'm going to call this the bad method i'm going to control z out of here if we do the bad method when you select it it'll actually still have that transparency still in the background, which is bad because what I'm about to teach you here, if you want layers, like multiple sprites to layer with each other, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you, you click it and then hit Control D, it'll duplicate it. And what I like to do here is have repeating backgrounds. If you have the issue here, you can't really duplicate it. It's smart. It, I don't know the freaking word. Like, there's a smart method to it to magnetically link to each other, because you can see those little horizontal dots. Usually that means it'll fit along with something, and it's fitting along the invisible things we've copied with the file. We do not want that. So I'm going to control Z back and delete these two things, pretend this never happened. Redo the magic wand tool so we can have it perfectly selected. We're going to cut it, put it in here, and I'm honestly going to make it bigger. And now, we're going to hit Control-D so we can layer right here. See how those two 
come into contact with each other, that horizontal and vertical line are now layered in. And now it creates a perfectly symmetrical background. It looks like it was just now extended. This is good because when we test the video, it'll look like it'll be perfect. It'll look like it was a longer version of the background the whole time. Now I know that sounds all confusing and stuff, and you completely ignore this part of the video, but I just wanted to point that out. Now that we have somewhat of a background in, we can insert a new layer. I'm going to lock so we don't accidentally edit it. So see, you can't edit it at all. Now I'm going to go into here and make this new flat ground right here. I'm going to use a special method to import it in. Paste it in. I'm actually going to make it bigger because Sonic is bigger. And I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate it so I can endlessly see them and magnetically link it together. See, it looks like they were together the whole time. Now that we have a background, if we test it out real quick, I know there are some white bars. Don't worry, we'll uh, do something about that in a minute. But now what we're going to want to do is go back to the Sonic layer. I'm going to position him right here. Honestly, I should shrink him a little bit because he's still big compared to the, the rest of the background. We're going to redo the motion tween we did here. I'm going to do 30 frames again. It's going to make him look slow, but that's okay. I'm going to do the classic tween. Insert keyframe. Now, as you can see here, the background has disappeared. You're just going to want to make sure these frames keep up with the Sonic animation is. What I like to do here is have a shortcut called F5. It just makes the background come up to whatever frame you had it clicked on and it helps speed up the animation process when you know these shortcut keys so you don't have to keep slowly right clicking insert frame and stupid stuff like that but now that the, the background frame is also keeping up with Sonic we can create the motion tween so we can move Sonic across the screen right click classic tween and now that he's moving we'll test the video and now look at that, he's moving across the screen. Very, very nice. With this motion tweeting, you can create moving backgrounds like you've seen in some of my works, where it looks like he's running super fast on the background and the camera's following him. It's a nice little illusion. Um, and you can create multiple things of that. Motion tweeting is a powerful tool. This is just a basic form of what you can do with it. We can do way more with it later down the line. Now, next we will be doing the the vcam setup and i will have one of my files which i will pull up here in a second in the description i have made i have edited my own version of the vcam you can go find the original one if you don't like mine but um, i'm going to open it up vcam it's action script 2.0 this is why i said if if you're looking for action script 3.0 tutorial you're looking at the wrong one Go away and look for an Action Script 3 tutorial because I'm only using two. But what I have here is a special V cam. They call it a virtual camera. I'm going to open this file and cut it and put it in its own top layer. Top layer is a crucial thing here. I'm going to name it V cam and I'm going to paste it. Now it's going to be put into the library. You're not going to want to mess with it at all. But what this VCam essentially does is let you zoom in anything you want where that square is located. It's the square here, if I move it over to Sonic right here through the whole animation, you're only going to see what's in that square. So when I test it out, it looks like I zoomed in. If I zoom this out and then test the animation, it looks like I zoomed out exactly what it's supposed to do. It's a very, very handy tool. So when you do motion twinning yourself, which I will actually just demonstrate here with the V cam, you can even motion twin the V cam. So when I move and hit insert keyframe, you can actually hit create classic tween before you move him so you can have referencing for later. This is probably just going to sound like a bunch of gibberish to you, but trust me, you will get it here in a second. Now I can take the end frame of the V cam and actually make it drag over to Sonic or for the sake of professionalism, I'm going to make a drag to the end of the background so you don't see white all of a sudden. But now, now the, um, the even the camera is animated along with Sonic. So when we test the movie, it looks like, oh wow, you know, the camera's moving with Sonic and it's like, jew, jew, and it makes it look a little more action-y and cool. You can even take it to the extreme 
and I'll show you something real quick here is if you click in the middle of a motion tween and click over here there's this thing called rotate this is where you can get things to become a little fancy I like to, these things are clockwise and counter counterclockwise and what you like to do here is it'll default it to one so now the camera will blah, 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 blah. the camera will rotate once as its motion tween so you can add a bit of weird flair and it can get dissipating like that just a little thing I'd like to point out but uh, yeah this is animation tutorial part two it is concluded hopefully you guys haven't been too lost because there a lot of crap happened here in this one episode alone you've learned how to move an object like Sonic across the screen you've learned about the V cam and how it works and how you can use it to its advantage to make it look things look better like uh like that and uh, hopefully in part three you'll stay with us and we can figure out how to make a little more complex scenes I will dig into part three I will dig into code action script more action script stuff things we're gonna have to create by ourselves so um, hopefully you guys will stick around for part three and I'll see you on the next one see ya